Hi, I'm Liz with D'Addario Strings, and I am here with Sam Finley of David Gage and the producer of The Realist Pickup. And what are we going to do here today, Sam? Today, Liz, we are going to change the strings on this string bass. And let's do it. Okay, so the first step is to, as you can see, we lay the bass on its back. Um, with lower strings, the cello of the bass, it's really important if you don't lay it on its back, when you take the tension off the strings, the sound post can fall down. The second thing is also to have everything ready when you change the strings, I mean, have your strings ready. You don't want to leave the bass out of tension for too long. If you have the chance to set everything up before you do the, the string changing, that's a good thing. Okay, so the next step is to take the strings off the bass. Okay. I like to take two strings off at a time, and that allows the strings to lay correctly in the peg box one over the other. And I would also, just following that same theory, take them off inside out. In this case, the inside is the A string and the outside is the E string. So we'll start by removing the A string. I'm going to use a winder bit and a drill. I'll first take the winder and put it around the tuning machine on the A string. And then I will wind it so that the floss goes towards the bridge. Just be careful, this offers some torque. Once the string is loosened enough, you want to get into the peg box okay. and you want to pull out the string that'll be hooked on the winder. Ah. See? Yep. And then you can just pull the string out. Easy. And then we'll do the same thing for the E string. So now that we have the strings loosened up, we'll just go down to this end here and we're going to take the ball ends out. And when you pull them out, make sure that, you know, when you pull these things through, it's going to want to try to scratch your top, so make sure that you have, you know, a hand there. I like to, to kind of pull and push at the same time. It allows it so that they not to scratch the top at all. And then we do the same thing to the A string. Feed it into your hand and pull and push it through. So now we're going to just put on new strings. Okay. Um, we're going to put Daddario Kaplan strings on this bass, right. and Daddario has this great color code system, so you know which string you're working with. At the end of this string, the green indicates that this is an E string, and the black, that it's an A string. So if you're going to use felts, now is the time to do it. And what a felt does is it just prevents vibration, it softens up the ball end on the other side of the tailpiece. Instead of doing inside out, going back, we're going to do outside in. And this way we have free and clear access to that peg as we come in. And it makes it just lay more easily. And then you're doing it the opposite as you would do. You feed it in and push and pull, keeping your, an eye on the ball in while you do it so that you don't scratch the top of the base. And then we'll just do the same thing with the A string really quickly. Sounds good. What you're going to do next is you're going to prepare the surfaces that touch the string. We're going to put a little bit of graphite on the bridge slots just so that the bridge doesn't grip the string while you're tuning. And then we're going to do the same thing down by the nut, just putting enough graphite in there so that the string doesn't get bound. So then we're just going to take this E string, again working outside in, and we're going to bring it down here. And we're going to feed it through this little eyelet, little hole in the middle of the spindle on the tuning machine. And we're going to grab our winder. And we're going to tighten it up just a little bit. And then once it's gone around once, you want to twist the end around the string once or twice. And then wind it up. Making sure you keep, you want to make sure you keep all of the strings in a line, this nice straight line. And when you're getting down to the end, you want to make sure that you keep tension on it and that the ball end of the string is flat up against the bottom of that tailpiece and obviously that the string is in the bridge slot. Right there. Right. Okay. I'm trying to make sure that these strings stay as close to one another as they can, because they can get, they can get bunched up, mm -hmm. they get pinched. Best is to take your time and just to make sure you're keeping tension on the string. 
So then we would just go ahead and do the other side. We would do that. Now that we've done the E and the A string, we would do the G and the D string, mm -hmm. following the same rules that we set for the other side. We'll take them off inside out, and we'll put them back on outside in. Okay. That gives us clear access to the peg box. And, uh, and before we go, do you have any tips or tricks or do's or don'ts that you want to leave us with? Yes, I do. Uh, do make sure that you have the right size string for the size of instrument that you're using. If you don't know what your string length is, then I would ask your local luthier or bass shop to measure your string length. You can also measure it yourself. The distance between the bridge and the nut is important. And do make sure that the bridge stays centered and upright. Um, while you're tuning it, it could lean forward, especially if you don't use enough graphite. And how do you know when your strings need to be replaced? Good question. In general, if you see any discoloration, if the strings don't look the same color they did when you bought them, then you should probably buy new ones. But in general, keep an eye on the bridge and on the nut. If you see any separation or wear, mm -hmm. then I think it would be time to start looking for a new set. Okay, cool. Thanks, Sam. My pleasure. Thank you.